Welcome to John Park's workshop. It's me, John Park. This is my workshop. Let's do this thing. Uh, first of all, thanks for uh, coming by to watch the show. And if you're joining us uh, via watching us on a video on the internet, which is pretty much everyone, uh, you may wonder where's all the chat? Well, you can find that in Discord if you head to Adafruit's Discord server and go over to the live broadcast channel. That's where you'll find us chatting away. Uh, and you can get that invite by going to adafru.it slash discord. And uh, this is the kind of shenanigans you can expect right here. This is the, uh, the discord going on. Uh, so hello, Andy Calloway and Mr. Certainly. Nice to see you all. Uh, I'm going to throw on my glasses so I can actually read these things. Oh, yeah, I got those names right. Uh, and we're also keeping one eyeball pointed at uh, the... Uh, YouTube, so if you're chatting over there, probably someone will say hi. Uh, hi. So let's see, what have we got uh, in store for you today? Let's, um, let's start off with a, uh, a little mention of our jobs board. If you want to look for a job or you want to post a job, you can do it all for free over on the Adafruit job site. That's jobs.adafruit.com. There it is right there. Uh, you can see uh, Jesse May. She'll give you a little uh, intro to the jobs board if you want to check out that video. And then here's a bunch of job postings that might be interesting to you. So uh, I encourage you to go check those out over on jobs.adafruit.com. Uh, let's see. Next up, I have a product pick of the week. And as you know, I always like to pick a product that I think is fun and exciting and try it out and show it off and build something with it. Well, now I'm doing that as its own separate show, which happens on Tuesdays uh, at this exact time on Tuesday, so 4 o'clock Eastern. And my product pick this week was this STEMAQT uh, temperature and humidity sensor. I wrote TEM. Uh, temp. Temp and humidity sensor. It's the AHT20. And you can see it's got a little isolated... Uh, uh, package there for humidity and temperature sensing keeps it a little uh, uh, isolated from the rest of the board so it's a little quicker to respond and uh, more accurate and uh, let me show you a little excerpt from that show This is it, this is the AHT20 temperature and humidity sensor. You'll see here, I've got a simple code in CircuitPython to display the humidity of that sensor right there. If I take this and I breathe on it, kind of like you fog a mirror, I'm gonna go ahead and fog it. You can see very quickly, we've taken it up to 100% humidity and then the dry air here drops it back down very quickly. If I hit the A button, now I'm switching over to temperature. That is my pick of the week. And I'm gonna go ahead and do my ceremonial moving of the HT20 sensor to the pegboard of Stemma QT goodness. See you next week. Yeah, dig that song. That was, uh, that was Tom, our very own uh, Bartle Beats who created that little song there. Uh, so tune in for the full show. You can also catch it afterwards on YouTube to see uh, the full thing. I go into the code a little bit and some other examples, um, some use cases, and uh, something that we mentioned last night on the show and tell. You might have heard us talking about it because we're excited about it, is we're now doing something uh, somewhat unique and special, which is we broadcast that show live from inside the product page. So if you head to that HT20 product page, I've got it right here, uh, during the show, when you uh, scroll down, you'll see that's where the live video will play. And we're doing a discounted price during the live stream only. So we're experimenting with this, seeing what works, what doesn't. Uh, this week it was a 10% off. Next week it's uh, 
going to be something much bigger and it's going to be a more expensive board. So I would say go put it in your calendar. One o'clock Pacific, four o'clock Eastern on Tuesday. I'm going to be doing a product pick of the week and you'll be able to get it for an outrageous discount if it's something you want. And I think you might want it. Uh, so that's the, uh, the product pick of the week. And now let's jump into the Make Code Minute. All right, so for the Make Code Minute today, you can see it right there. What I wanted to show was an example of doing a type of candle flicker animation uh, very simply inside of Make Code. So what I have uh, going on here, you can see there's a, a little diffuser that I've put on a Circuit Playground Express here, and then I just have all the pixels set to a kind of an orangey, warm yellow. Uh, and in my code here, what you'll see is that I have essentially one function that I created called flicker. And inside of this, I'm doing a few things to give us some nice randomness. First of all, I set the minimum brightness value to some random number between 70 and 100. Then I set my maximum brightness value to a um, uh, minimum of whatever that minimum was, so that starting point, up to a random uh, value, which is between 140 and 180, minus that minimum brightness. So this gives us a very uh, particular range that can change, but they're always going to be uh, nicely related to each other. And then I have a couple loops here. First, we go and index increasing the brightness uh, by one until we get from the minimum to the maximum. Uh, then we pause a random amount of time. Then we get a new minimum so we can drop down a little darker. And then we run through the thing in reverse. We drop down until we hit that bottom level and then pause again. Uh, and, and you can see the results there. I think they look nice. And you can also take a look in the console here uh, where I'm displaying what those look like. So you'll see there's never a jump. It's always going to be a continuous line. And it has some little pauses in there and things that you can see. But I think we get a nice, somewhat realistic... Uh, candle flicker. It's a nice warmish kind of glow. Looks, looks good if you don't look right at the pixels too. Let me move that up there. You get this kind of nice cheery. You could also use this for sort of like a fireplace glow. Uh, but I thought that was a nice way to do it in a very simple uh, type of loop. And uh, so that is how you can create a flicker animation inside of Make Code running on the Circuit Playground Express. And that is your Make Code Minute. All right, uh, let's see. Let me jump now to uh, the game pick of the week. So I'm going to head back into this here. And my game pick of the week this week is called Fairy Island. Uh, and this is from Valentina and Dad. And they said, this has been our lockdown project. Can you find the magic wand on Fairy Island? Uh, so here's the game. I'm going to go ahead and expand here so we can see a, a large screen view of it. Uh, and what happens in this game, if I go ahead and hit A, it says press the B button to see the contents of your backpack. Uh, and you're going to find a wand. So I can move this character around and I'm going to go and say hi to this chicken here. Actually, first let's check our backpack. Uh, your backpack's empty. Continue to explore the island. Now I'll head over and say hey to the chicken. It says, hey, I'm Henrietta. Get it? I love that. Please take some eggs. And now, if you check your contents of the backpack, we have eggs. Uh, and so I won't take you through the whole game, but what happens is there's a character that we need to meet who can help us get our wand uh, who's hungry. And so we're going to go around collecting a recipe card and then all of the ingredients that we need to then build a bridge with this character to that wand there. Uh, and so I think this is a really fun collect the items game. Oh, look, we found a bunch of juicy apples. And here's a cow. Hey, cow. This is Florence. Hey, please have some milk. Well, thank you. Uh, and so I'll let you, I don't want to, I don't want to spoil it, but I think this is really nicely done. Uh, if we take a look at the code here, uh, I encourage you to go and take a look at this after you've played it. You don't want to spoil anything. Uh, but this will show you how all the sprites are built, how the dialogue is created, uh, how the inventory system works. Uh, and uh, it's really adorable. It's a, a, a nice, nice job. So thank you so much for posting that, Valentina and Dad. And that's my Make Code Arcade game pick of the week. It's Fairy Island. Really nicely done.
All right. Uh, let's see. Let's uh, check in with the chat. What's going on, anybody? Uh, don't start a flame war, someone said about the, uh, the little candle here. Yeah, that's a good, uh, a good point. Someone said that uh, this can be a nice... Uh, oh, i got to restart it. Something hung there. What have I done? Uh, this could be a nice pumpkin uh, flicker animation. So you could, you could just build that and stick it in a pumpkin. Why didn't I think of that? That's, that's exactly what this should be. Um, so you can see there glow like that. Looks very nice. And this was just a piece of like a file folder or something that I taped into a sort of cylinder to, to make that diffusing tube. Uh, but yeah, good idea, Todd. Uh, you can also, of course, do things like flickering colors. So you could, you could make that a little more sophisticated and not just change uh, your brightness, but you could also change between yellow and orange, which are pretty close on the, on the Circle Playground Express, and get some variation in warmth there, which would be nice. Um, all right, well, let's see. What have we got next? Uh, oh, you know what? I wanted to do a, uh, a gear report. Um, so let me jump over to... You know what? I'm just going to grab it. I'll do it right here. Um, I just picked up this... Let's put down a, a little down shooter camera there. Um, I just bought a cool new driver, a little uh, titanium driver here and bits. Uh, there it is right there. You can see it. Uh, and this is from County Com, and it's pretty inexpensive. It's about $30. Uh, it comes with, it, the, the quality is incredible. It's, it's a really nicely machined stuff, hardened tools. Um, comes with uh, ferrous ends, so these are stuck, oh, there we go, magnetically uh, into here, so they'll, they'll snap into place and you can use them. And it's got a really nice uh, bearing handle. I don't know if you can see me spinning that there, but this is really nice for when you need to apply some downward uh, pressure to drive something in and still spin freely. Um, so I, I would say go check that out. It's a pretty cool one. Um, you know, if push comes to shove, buy some Adafruit stuff. But if you've got a little extra, I'm going to recommend this really nice new driver. Uh, and one of the things about this is it's not this, these are quarter inch um, bits. So I don't think it's going to fit these little uh, sort of security ones that you might have, but it will fit uh, your sort of standard stuff that you might have for impact drivers. So it's a, it's a little slightly bigger scale. Uh, so that's my gear report. Pretty cool. County Com, C-O-M-M. -M. Uh, they have neat stuff. Uh, Brent asks for the URL. I believe it's county, C-O-M-M dot -M com, county com dot com. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's my gear report. All right, let's see. What next? Um, yeah, if you want to go check the, uh, the Discord server, uh, Mr. Certainly is fast on the draw and found, found the product in there. Uh, the price can't be beat, $30. This, this, you know, you might have seen um, some fancy fidget spinner type of screwdrivers that some YouTube makers have posted that are hundred and something dollars and they'll blow your mind, but uh, I'm guessing they work about the same as this one for 30 bucks. No offense. Those are cool, but. Oh, it's out of stock. Ah, I got the last one, I'll bet. All right, sign up for a uh, sign up for the newsletter. You'll you'll find out uh, when they come back in stock. Uh, all right, let's see. You know what? I think it's time for us to talk about our project of the week. So uh, you can actually see it right back there. Let me uh, let me hit the main cam, which is going to actually probably have have some fun trying to focus without a human face back there because of the changing pixels. So I'm going to go stand back there uh, for a second and talk about this. Uh, so this is a, in fact, I'm going to get fancy and zoom that lens in real quick and see if this works. Here we go. Yeah, it helps a little bit. Uh, so this is, this is my little, uh, bar top picade cabinet, but I just set it, set it on there cause it made a cool stand for it. And I was thinking I may try to mount this up here, which would be pretty cool. Um, but what we have right here is a matrix portal. Uh, plugged directly into the back of the uh, four millimeter pitch, 64 by 32 pixel display. And we have a, uh, a port of the slideshow software from the Pi Portal, uh, which Melissa has just ported to the Matrix Portal. And you'll see that more and more. If there are things we've created on Pi Portal, there's a good chance we can also create them on Matrix Portal within uh, reason. This is not a touch screen. Uh, so, all I've got right here is a two and a half amp, five volt power supply going into the USB-C uh, plug that we have on there. 
Um, and let's see, am I plugged into this? Let me just see real quick if I can switch cameras to the down shooter without breaking too much. Uh, I don't know if this is gonna respond. Let's see if I can wake up the trackpad. No, it's, oh, there we go. That worked. Yeah, that'll do it. Uh, so yeah, this camera likes it even less, so. Uh, but there you can see I've got USB-C running into the matrix portal. Uh, and this has uh, a couple of terminals running power directly to the board, and it's plugged in over the IDC connector uh, straight in for data uh, running the board for the pixels, tell them what to do. And uh, if I zoom in here a little more on the matrix portal, you can see, uh, I believe this is getting a, a newer, fancier silk screen. This is an early one. I think the silk might have been updated. Um, does say matrix portal up there. We have three buttons along the side here. This is a reset button. And then these ones are uh, what we're calling the up button and the down button, but you can use them for anything you like. And what they've been uh, assigned to in this case is uh, right now I have, I think a three second delay between um, images in the slideshow. If I press the top button, it will pause uh, that display. So it's not gonna auto advance anymore. And then I just updated this bottom button so that it will uh, advance. I think Melissa had set it to go back, which is good if you've, if you've passed an image and wanna go back, but I wanted to go forward while I was testing things. Uh, so each time I press this little button here, it will allow me to, to advance to the next image. So you can actually do that really quickly. There's no, no delay as I flip through those images. Um, and so what I wanted to do is, I'm gonna go ahead and unplug this and let's head back over to the uh, workstation here. And I want to talk about uh, creating this pixel art uh, or adapting pixel art. Um, you can make your own fresh art. You can create art inspired by other things. You can also uh, rip artwork from existing games. Uh-oh, now I've done it. Let's see. Let me switch cameras here. I think I was tweaking that... Uh, we go. So we'll go to this down shooter and let me try to reposition things for a second. Get that out of the way. Uh, all right. So what I'll do is actually um, take uh, uh, you through a tour of some of the ways that I, I um, adapted this artwork from Sprite Sheets. Um, and, and just a, a little bit of note, uh, I'm not sure about the legality of including sprites that are directly from games from potentially litigious companies. So I'm not gonna include these BMP files in the learn guide, but I'll show you how you can make them yourself. Um, we'll, we'll probably include some of our own art on there. Uh, so in fact, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up uh, a program called A Sprite. And this is pretty inexpensive, maybe got a free demo version. I can't remember, I, I bought it couple years ago and uh, I don't know, it might have been 10 or $15. Maybe it's less. Someone, someone can check for me, but it's the, it's called a Sprite, but it's spelled A E S P R I T E. So go, go look for that. If you're interested in doing pixel art. Um, and what I want to do is uh, take you through some of the setup you'll do on creating pixel art to show on um, the uh, matrix portal for this project. Um, first of all, the matrix portal is going to just act as a drive. So you'll plug it in. It's circuit Python. It's going to show up as a drive. We have a BMPs folder and anything you throw in there will be included in the slideshow so long as it's a, a proper sprite. Um, let's see, Mr. Certainly says that the uh, A sprite is $20 from the asprite.org site uh, and it's often on sale on the Humble store or Steam. Uh, there's also, by the way, a program that is a web-based pixel art program that's name is something like Pixel, something like that, not exactly that, I can't remember what it is, but if you Google around, there's actually some free uh, pixel art web-based stuff you could use as well. So what I've done right here is I went to uh, the itch.io site, which is a indie game and game assets site, and you can buy sprite sheets there. There's also some available for free and they're, uh, they're licensed to use however you want. Um, so this one I could actually include. This is, this is one that uh, you can donate some number of dollars if you feel like it or not. Um, I'm gonna donate if I use these in the guide because it's the right thing to do. But uh, you, can, you can use these. These are free to use. Um, 
in your own works. And so what I'm going to do is, uh, this is a sprite. Let me, let me jump over to a sprite. So this is a sprite sheet of sort of a turnaround of a character. And I'm not going to talk too much about sprite sheets this week. I think I might actually do a little bit of an update next week to take you through uh, animation and doing animation with sprite sheets because it lines up pretty well with the way we do it using Display.io and CircuitPython. Uh, but typically a, uh, in a game, we can have a sheet of an animation or a turnaround of a character um, or an effect or a prop which then can be uh, uploaded as a single bitmap, and then the bitmap can be scanned through quickly, which is faster than loading different bitmaps into memory. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to prep just one of these images for uh, use in our um, slideshow. So first thing I did was um, I think I actually colored it. So this is, this is how it came. It came in as, as gray. Uh, so there's a paint bucket tool, and it's the same shortcut as Photoshop. If you're familiar with that, hit G, you can get that tool. Uh, and then I picked a color, uh, kind of a, a brightish blue for this medium, and then a slightly darker one out here, and a lighter one up here. Depending on how shiny you want it, you might make that almost white. Yeah, that's nicer. Uh, and I can make a, a real dark one for this right here. That looks kind of cool. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the marquee tool. It's the selection tool over here. And I'm going to drag a marquee. And you'll notice there's some really helpful info down at the bottom, which is telling me the coordinates and the area that I've selected. So right now I have a 32 by 32 pixel uh, area selected, which is kind of perfect for what I want to do. So what I'm going to do is release and I'm going to hit copy. And now I'm going to create a new uh, sprite. You can go to file new. And it'll ask you, what size sprite do you want to make? I'm going to uh, choose the default here. The reason it's saying 3232 is that I have that in my copy buffer, and it knows it. So uh, I can go ahead and uh, say OK to this, uh, and I'll go ahead and paste my image. Now, the nice thing is we're not really worried about um, palettes. We, we don't real, really need to worry about um, constricting our sprites to a particular palette because of the way we're um, displaying them in display I.O. on the matrix portal. You could uh, index things and worry about palettes, but I, I don't have to, which is nice uh, restriction to be lifted. Um, and then what we can do is we'll fill uh, the background in black. So what I found works pretty well on the matrix portal is have pretty dark backgrounds behind your sprite or just black, entirely black, so that things show up nicely. Um, in fact, let me, let me put a little, um, where is my down shooter. Let's, let, me, let me throw this back in here so you can see. So you'll notice uh, on any of these when I'm uh, with, I think, one exception or two exceptions. I think uh, Luigi and Hello Kitty there I thought looked cute on their little backgrounds. Um, but otherwise, I want these on black. Uh, so what we can do, let me not leave that one up so we don't invite lawyers. Uh, what we can do now is uh, add a black background here. So I'm going to go ahead and Go back to that eyedropper, uh, or, or rather to that paint bucket tool. I'll just pick black here, and I'll fill. Uh, depending on your fill settings, I have a, a tolerance of zero and not looking for contiguous pixels. So it's just going to fill everything that is the same as whatever was under my um, uh, cursor to that color. So this is good. This is a nice candidate for displaying on our, on our uh, display there. And uh, you know what? Just for fun, I'm going I'm to spruce things up a little bit and give them a red visor. So now what I can do is I'm going to save this image. Oops. I'm going to save the image by hitting Command S. Uh, and I'm going to go and find the um, circuit Python drive. And I'll go into the BMPs folder. And I'm going to save this as... I'm going to call it A Soldier, just so it gets uh, thrown up there first alphabetically. A Soldier. Dot BMP, and I actually I think I have to pick BMP for from here. I'm not sure if it pays attention to the extension I put automatically. Uh, can't use an alpha channel. That's okay. I don't want it to preserve an alpha channel. Don't show this alert again, uh, and save it. Okay. So now what you'll see is immediately uh, my my display. Uh, 
I paused it there. My display brings up that image, and there's our little soldier guy. Um, and then what I found is that we're using uh, four or five bit. You can choose between. I think I'm using five bit color on here right now. Uh, and these are small enough image, images that we're not running into memory issues with using that high of a color bit depth. So we get some nice color rendition, but you'll still find that some things um, will look better if you tune them by hand a little for this display. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to darken some of those gray lines that define the, the parts uh, so that they pop a little better because um, this is a different type of display. You can see these these uh, a little better on a, on a monitor than you can on that display. By the way, the display doesn't flicker in real life. It's just an artifact of, of using this camera to view it. Um, and so you can, I believe you can use like level tools, uh, leveling like um, gamma tools and brightness contrast tools in here. But I'm just going to uh, ignore all that and do it by hand. So I'm going to pick a, a, a darker gray color than what's in there. And again, I'm just going to go and... Uh, swap that in for uh, all of those lines. So you can see if I undo and redo, we're just going to define things a little better with that. And I'll go ahead and uh, maybe lighten up these light sections as well. So I can eyedropper that with uh, just hit the I key, click on a pixel, and I'm, I'm getting uh, the value of that pixel. Uh, and I'll just brighten it up a little bit there and then uh, use my uh, paint bucket to pop it in there. So there we go. That's nice and bright. I'll go ahead and hit save. And <laughs> I saved it directly to the, the matrix portal, which is fine. Um, let me hit reset here and pause. So there we go. Now he's looking a little, uh, a little better. I like that having that definition in there. Uh, and so that's the sort of stuff that I did to uh, just take one-to-one -one scale artwork. But what about these? These are uh, clearly blockier, maybe 8x8 or 16x16 16 pixel designs. Something bad's happening there with my power supply, sorry. Um, so I wanted to show you how, how those work. What I'll do is um, I'm going to grab a, let me open up a, uh, a browser real, real quick. And I'm just going to grab a sprite sheet. Um, you can do this, just Google sprite sheet. Uh, and how about Pac-Man? You will find sprite sheets. Uh, I'm not going to show the site on here because I have no idea how legal this is, but you'll find kind of a major sprite sheet uh, website. And I will go uh, to some general sprites here. And I'm going to copy an image. And then I'm, you'll see it in a second here. Sorry, I'm narrating this. Um, OK, so if I come back to a sprite, I will make a new image. And I'm going to paste. And so there you can see I've now got the sprite sheet from the original Pac-Man arcade game. Uh, and let's say we want to do uh, the cherries. So I'm going to, again, use my um, marquee selection tool. And I have to unselect. The whole thing was selected by default. And I'll go ahead and just pick the extents of this uh, cherry here. So I've copied that. I'll make a new image. It's 12 by 12, OK? And I'll paste that. And now uh, what you can do is adjust the scale of this without resampling it. So we don't want to add softening anti-aliasing, even though we're getting bigger. So we're going to use a type of uh, um, resize method called nearest neighbor. And I'll show you what the, this will look like. Uh, I'll go up to sprite, sprite size. And right now it's saying it's 12 by 12. And I'll set this up to 32 by 32. Uh, and then this may be set to bilinear. In fact, I'll show you what that looks like. So it's, it's softened it, uh, which looks horrible in my opinion. <laughs> uh, don't do that. So I'm going to undo this. And now I'm going to go back to uh, frame, uh, sorry, sprite, sprite size. And I'll set that to nearest neighbor. Uh, and there you can see now it's 32 by 32, but it's retained the essence of it. It, it, it looks like the same art. It's, it's rescaled it sort of perfectly for our needs. Uh, so now I'm going to go ahead and save this. Uh, and again, I'll um, drop it right into this BMPs folder. This is perfect. And I'll call this uh, Cherry. BMP. I'll set that format 
BMP files, hit OK. Uh, and now I'll just pause and scroll quickly until we get to that one. There we go, there's our cherries. Um, ooh, did I not actually rescale those? Let's see, sprite size. No, I didn't. <laughs> I bet people were yelling at me in the... There we go, there's the resize I was looking for. All right, so I'm going to resave that. And now... You can see we have... Whoops, I, I hit the reset <laughs> button, sorry. Stay, there we go. Now we have um, a sort of pixelated look. Oh, I forgot to pause it. Uh, that's why Melissa had backwards on there a bit. All right, let's wrap around. I've got a lot of sprites on here now. You can see they really load quickly, which is impressive. That one has too many pixels as is. So I'm going to show you one more thing about how to deal with that. So uh, there we go. There's our cherries scaled up nicely, in my opinion. Uh, if you look at Samurai Jack here, you'll see that his sleeve has this dithering um, method used on it. And maybe I'll show this another time, because I don't think we have time to do it from scratch here today. But essentially, that was a solid uh, color. And what I did was I created a custom brush that can fill with a dithering pattern so that it became sort of a uh, one pixel for every four is lit. And it's this nice dithering pattern that still uh, reads, as that's his sleeve, but it's not a whole mass of white pixels, which is actually going to draw too much current for what I have this plugged into, which right now is just a USB port on my computer. Probably it only gives us two amps, uh, is my guess. It's a USB-C port, um, but I think it on this USB bus on this, on this Mac, it might only be two amps. Um, this seems to play okay with the two and a half amps that I got out of the, um, the power supply there. Uh, it's this, this um, Miss Pac-Man and the Ghost one that you can see. That's the kind of effect you'll get it's kind of rad looking, but that's the kind of effect you'll get when you have um, a greater current draw than, than the power supply can, can supply. Uh, amazingly, it's just going to display that and it didn't just crash the board. Um, so awesome engineering on Lemoore's part. Um, but you should give it more power or you should reduce the complexity of your image or, or the reduce the amount of pure white pixels for sure, because those are using all three diodes in every, every uh, pixel on here. So um, I'll show some techniques for that another time, but um, in, a, in a brief version of it, if you didn't have the time or energy to just go and um, uh, create the, the dithering brush, you can even do it like this. So as you go through and add dots to your image, you're actually just reducing the complexity. This can be random or these can be a pattern. Now they're looking like strawberries. Um, but I'll show you another time how to use a, a dithering brush to make that uh, way easy to just fill with different dithering patterns. Uh, all right, so this is a good time to check in on ye old Discord and see what's what if there's any questions or uh, thoughts about stuff. Um, Mark Gambler's having all sorts of game dev flashbacks right now. Uh, I have to admit, I spent, I, I've, I've done pixel art for various things, but not games. In games, I was always, uh, I started out doing game stuff in, in CG, so I never did much 2D stuff other than the texture mapping that goes along with, uh, with CG things. Um, but uh, that is our project of the week. I'll be uh, putting out a guide soon on how to create just a pixel slideshow. And then uh, I'll update that with some animation. What I found is that uh, even just displaying the, B the BMP files, we can adjust the, uh, the delay in the code to run really fast through them. But even better is we're going to use the sprite sheets, which allow us to uh, very efficiently put a bunch of animation frames onto a single BMP and those then just jump to pixel positions on those. Um, all right, well, I think that is it. And... Uh, I want to thank you for stopping by today. Uh, again, I will um, mention that we've got the product pick of the week coming up on Tuesday. It'll be a new product, a new weird face, some new emojis, and uh, maybe a new background color. So stay tuned for that. Um, also, I'll mention that Scott is going to be doing a deep dive today at 2 o'clock. Normally, he's on Fridays at 2, but uh, he's, he's moved it up a day because he's got some, something going on tomorrow. So if you want to see Scott do uh, a deep dive on probably some ESP32 S2 stuff, but I'm not sure what, what he's up to exactly, 
Um, he's writing drivers and libraries and things to make, uh, make those chips work with CircuitPython. I think that's what he's up to. Uh, ask him in the chat. Oh, he's typing right now in the chat, so we're about to find out, I suspect. Uh, yeah, thank you, C. Grover. Thank you, everyone, for stopping by. And uh, that is it for Adafruit Industries. I'm John Park. This has been John Park's Workshop, and I will see you next week. Bye-bye.